Welcome everyone. This is the second session today of the Seesaw Tech Integrationist Success Series. We are so honored that you are spending time with us today, especially at this extremely busy time of year for many of you. I'm Angela and I taught kindergarten for 15 years before joining the Seesaw team. I lead the community team here at Seesaw and basically that means um, I support teachers all over the world who are getting started with Seesaw. You can definitely connect with me on Twitter. I love to see what you're up to and support you in any way that I can. So as a reminder, if you've never joined us before for the series, what can you expect out of it? We are really here to support you, inspire you, and make connections for you. So in this series, we are covering a variety of topics focused on practical ideas and resources, and of course, bringing you connected to more, more colleagues in your similar role. So that is what we strive to do. And if you're watching this via recording and you're thinking, gosh, how, do, how can I get into the next one live? Here is the link so you can use this to register for our next session as well, which will be happening next month. We'll be back in action. Today, we are so excited to introduce you to our Seesaw Learning Levels. And this is something that we've actually been working on and uh, working in conjunction with Tech Integrationists to really find things that we can help support you with. So as we go into this session, here's what you can plan on for today. We're gonna to talk about the why and the how, not only of tech integration, but leading into what we're talking about related to these levels. We're also going to introduce the Seesaw Learning Levels. You are the first audience that actually gets to peek at these. So we are really excited to hear your reaction and hear your feedback. We're going to talk about using the resources, we're also going to shift gears and also talk about updates coming to Seesaw as well as webinar certificates, which reminds me, um, during this session, I'm actually going to be giving out a six character code. So if you are watching this via a recording, make sure you listen to the whole thing because I will pause a couple times and give a portion of the code that you can use to get a certificate. More on that at the end though. So let's get started with the why and how. So we know integrating technology can be overwhelming for some teachers. I probably don't have to tell you this, right? So as always, we know that the why needs to come first. So when working with teachers, we really need to set a purpose, make sure we're showing a clear benefit for them or maybe a solution to a problem that they're facing in their classroom. As you know, teachers also work at very different paces when integrating technology. Some you know, can, can do so independently without much assistance and other teachers, again, need more support. So my analogy that I'm actually going to work through today with you is related to a different topic, um, working out, right? So, in, in our nature, because you're here, you're a tech integrationist, I'm working with teachers in the same, uh, a similar capacity, I thought it would be helpful to kind of bring in another analogy to help uh, make this connection a little bit more clear. So here I am at my workout place at 5.45 a.m., which is where you'll usually find me. And as I start this analogy, I, I think about it, first I need to figure out my purpose. Why, why am I even going to a gym? What, how is it going to help me? What is the benefit that I'm going to see, right? We're going to talk a little bit more about that as we continue on. Um, but related to me, you know, why would I even go to a gym? When you're working with teachers that are getting started with technology and specifically Seesaw, we want to make sure we're always leading with that why. Um, Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of confused uh, teachers in, on, on your hands, right? So it's always great to set that foundation, and you all know this already. One of the ways that we are hoping to help you in, in this aspect is really by the video that we have on our website, which gives a quick overview of Seesaw, but really actually highlights mostly that why. Why would you use Seesaw in your classroom? As we're working with teachers and 
they, you know, they kind of get that why. They're like, oh, I'm interested. Tell me more, right? So in my experience, they move into this show me phase. And you've probably experienced this as well. So they're interested, but they want to see it in action. So again, we're still setting that foundation. So maybe they get a tour of what CESA actually looks like. They try to understand the basic flow. And it's really helpful at this stage that they really can actually experience and view it from the student perspective as well. Because as you know, many teachers really feel more comfortable and confident when they're able to understand the whole flow before they start integrating something into their existing classroom. So, boy, when you get past that and you start playing with Seesaw, you realize, whoa, it can do so much, right? So actually, as part of my process in preparing and talking about these Seesaw learning levels, I actually spent a lot of time uh, really documenting and writing down all the different skills and aspects of Seesaw that a teacher could learn. And we know there's a lot out there. And what we noticed too is that, you know, teachers that are just starting really need to start really tiny and simple, right? And I think sometimes we get carried away. Those of us that have used Seesaw for a while and done all sorts of amazing things with it, we can tend to start talking to teachers um, and sharing those amazing, amazing um, experiences, but sometimes that is very overwhelming for a teacher and they don't have a clear path to take to continue their learning. So I'm also gonna mention here to um, teachers I've been working with, these are both tech integrationists, and you know them if you joined us in our first um, session. Joni and Heather are tech integrationists. They both work in large districts where uh, they are actually using Seesaw for schools. And about six months ago, I really started focusing on how can we best support you as a tech integrationist. So one of the things that we did is we started doing webinars specifically to, to support you. Um, but we've also, I've also been working closely with integrationists to figure out what resources would be most helpful for you and how do we make sure the interactions you're having with teachers, you feel like you are being the most effective. So when you think back to kind of that spreadsheet that I just showed a quick picture of, there's a lot of possibilities in Seesaw and they're you know quite endless. But for a new teacher, we really wanted to organize those and we wanted to make it really clear um, what are some great things to start with? What are some great things to make sure you get a firm grasp on? And that will motivate you to continue on and learn. And back to my analogy, right, that I started with about the gym and working out. If we go to a teacher, again, and we say, do 20 push-ups, right? You are going to have, and they are going to have maybe a negative reaction, right? To some teachers, when you are getting started with them using technology, they're going to feel you're asking them a similar question, right? So in my analogy, I'm thinking, why am I in this gym? <laughs> how, how is this exercise gonna help me? And please show me how to do this because I'm not even sure. Um, you'll notice actually that where I go, they actually have different levels where they are trying to build not only your strength, but your confidence um, in, doing a specific skill. So get ready. I never never thought I'd be sharing this with such a large group, but here we go. Um, so here I am, right? So how does this actually look? So when we are starting, we offer the highest level of support. So what's going on here in this picture um, are these bands. So this, if you have all of these bands on, that is giving you additional support to help you go up and down. It actually makes doing a push-up super easy because in this scenario, I might have 20 to 60 to 80 pounds pulling me up. So my muscles don't have to do that work, right? Now, as teachers keep building their foundation and building their strength, you can remove some of that support, right? So you'll notice in this picture, let's pretend it's several weeks down the road, right? I have removed a band. I'm feeling a little bit more confident. I've built that muscle, right? And then, boy, I'm going to, I'm gonna keep going, right? Again, you can see I've removed another band. So it's getting a little bit more difficult for me because I'm using my own strength 
but I've had that level of support, which makes it easy for me to continue progressing. So finally, you get to independence, right? I don't need these levels of support. I don't need all these bands around me. I can actually do this push up all by myself. So when we think about teachers that are integrating technology, we know that we have to also give them various levels of support. And we want to do that so that they can feel confident that they can do this independently and really, really thrive. So I would like to introduce to you the Seesaw Learning Levels. And before I do that, I'm going to pause and actually give out three digits of our six character code to get a certificate for those of you that are watching the recording. So those first three digits are four, six, eight. Okay, so when we talk about Seesaw Learning Levels, we are all about igniting teacher engagement with Seesaw. So to introduce them very clearly, I rarely put all this text on the slide, but I thought in this situation it would be helpful. Seesaw learning levels ignite teacher engagement by effectively supporting Seesaw usage with our new Seesaw learning levels. This easy to follow progression can guide you as you facilitate face-to-face -face training with teachers. The levels are meant to empower you and build confidence in teachers as they learn how Seesaw enhances what they're already doing in their classrooms. Sounds amazing, right? Well, let's take a peek at what this looks like. So when we, again, if you remember back to that page where I was showing you various um, Seesaw skills and abilities, we have set up five different levels. So we have level one is set up. This is the teacher that really Quite honestly, you know, you have to you have to have an account, right? They're getting their account. They're maybe trying to figure out how to download it on their device. Um, and then we go into level two, getting started. And we're going to talk about each of these um, briefly in a moment. Then we move to level three. And level three, as you can see here, has these stars. This is an amazing place for teachers to get to. They are now creating with their students and have the confidence to give it a try and maybe hand over that ownership to their students. Level four, we are deepening reflection. And level five, we have teachers that are integrating daily and Seesaw is a verb. They are at a very high level of integration and, and you know redefining a lot of the flows existing in their classroom. So what I wanna do right now is actually take a peek at each level because I wanna elaborate on it just moment for a moment, just for a little itty bit. Um, and then I'm gonna show you some resources that we have for you to actually make this come alive and support you in your work. So again, when we talk about level one, I would describe it as start here. So teachers are accessing the Seesaw app and becoming familiar with their Seesaw class. So again, this is really building that comfort in, you know, what is the journal view? What is this green ad button? What, you know, all of that. Those are all contexts that teachers need. When we look at level two, this is a teacher that is ready to get started. So at this point, they are seeing classroom ideas for integrating Seesaw. We're showing them a lot of things and they are practicing bringing them to life. And we're sticking with the basic tools here. We're starting with photo and voice, right? Because as we know, those of you already using Seesaw know that that alone is incredible. And we want a teacher to start posting to their class. Maybe they're, maybe as a teacher, they're just posting themselves, right? They do it once or twice. They're kind of getting, getting a little bit more confident and eager. And then we move to level three. So this is really focused on creating with students. So help students create with Seesaw, explore tips to enhance your lessons with simple Seesaw tools and become proficient and communicate with families. So I wanna note this here and you'll notice we're making a big deal about level three because this is really amazing. This is incredible. They, are, they have this in the hands of their students and they are starting to Think about ways that they can integrate this in their classroom and potentially not without us guiding and having as, as much support up until this stage, if that makes sense. So I just want to reiterate that, whoa, this is amazing, right? When we look at level four, we're focusing on deepening reflection. We're exploring formative insight tools to deepen student reflection and empowerment. 
We're sharing activities and communicating consistently with families. And then when we get to level five, Seesaw is a verb in your classroom. Explore advanced features and redefine family communication. Now that is just kind of a big overview of what we're talking about when we are introducing the idea of Seesaw learning levels. I also wanna to note too, how not to use them, right? So Seesaw learning levels are created to ignite teacher engagement, support you as a tech integrationist, and really build confidence and motivation to integrate technology for your teachers. They are not intended to be used to evaluate teachers. It is not intended to require that teachers progress at the same time or the same pace. We know some teachers, you might sit with them for 15 minutes and they have downloaded the app, they've played and posted five different times and they've already planned their lessons. They might be at level three within an hour, okay? You might have another teacher that's at, you know, gets to level two after a month and a half. Um, again, we need to be flexible and also as professionals, you know this, you're going to tailor um, your interactions with them as well. And we don't in intend these to be used independently by teachers without context or support. So I'm gonna show you kind of what I mean by that as we get going here. Okay, I'm just gonna pause for a moment. Here we go. So I'm gonna actually go into a little bit more details about some resources and using the resources and how does this all actually work together. So I wanna start by giving you a really crisp and clear idea of where to begin with teachers. So as we mentioned at the beginning, right, we need to set that foundation. We always start with the why and show me, right? So we are at that stage we're building, we're, we're laying down that solid foundation. And then one of the greatest options, you actually have two options in my mind. On the left, a face-to-face -face professional development session. So you're familiar with this, our interactive training slides that we prepare and present, uh, offer to you to use in a presentation. But I'm gonna talk about in a moment, a new resource that we are calling CESA training stations. So we're gonna explore those in a moment. Second option for those teachers that already have a foundation in the sense of they understand the why of CESA, now they're ready to get started. We of course offer our webinars, PD and your PJs, and a great session to attend is our Getting Started with CESA webinar. Those are available at all grade levels and ranges. Now, when we talk about both of these paths, and we relate that to the learning levels, a teacher that experiences either one of those will be through level two. If they have completed either one of those, they will be through um, level two in, in their um, use of Seesaw. So when we look at, oh my goodness, I'm, so, I'm getting so excited ahead of myself here. So let's focus in on one of our new resources, which are called Seesaw Training Stations. And these are ready-made stations that you can use to build teachers' confidence in starting Seesaw by exploring the basic Seesaw tools as a student. Alongside peers, teachers move through each station in about three to five minutes. Teachers see a classroom idea, follow step-by-step -step directions, and bring the idea to life by posting to Seesaw. So here are two examples. So you are already really familiar with our interactive training presentation. This is a new version of that in the sense of, if you are really, really confident and maybe a really experienced tech integrationist, or maybe not, you just wanna have more uh, interaction during this session, these training posters are really meant to provide you the opportunity to walk around the room. Teachers are working maybe independently or in small groups, and they're moving from station to station on their own. You'll notice here that these resources, this is one station. So this one is station two. It has two pages. On the first page, it describes um, the tools, how you would apply them to your classroom and actually give student examples. We have provided a QR code that they can simply scan with the Seesaw 
app when they're signed in as a student, um, the Seesaw built-in QR reader. And we've provided a bit.ly as well. So it's kind of hard to see in this image, but there is a bit.ly to each of those examples as well. You'll also notice in the bottom left of each of these resources, we have aligned the levels to that resource so that you as a tech integrationist will know when it's appropriate to use this with what teachers. And also the teachers also have a sense of the progress that they are making as well. After they have you know, seen some examples of their in their classroom, we give them a very specific example to try. This one in this station is independent fluency checks. So we walk through those steps and the teachers try this again as a student during this session. The second resource that I want to share with you we're so excited about are Seesaw Snapshots. And they offer your teachers quick ideas and Seesaw tips in printable form. So hang these in the teacher's workroom, lounge, restroom, or even send electronically to support teachers where they are. So when I'm talking about where to start with teachers, it is not with these Seesaw snapshots. We are assuming they've already maybe been to a PD session with you, they know about Seesaw, they've played a little bit, maybe they've come to the Getting Started webinar, then you as a tech integrationist have these in your back pocket to continue that momentum with using Seesaw. So I know you have run into teachers that, you know, maybe need this visual, right? Maybe they need this emailed to them. Maybe they need this, you know, to spark a reminder for them like, oh yeah, I actually haven't created my class yet, um, if you're a free teacher. Or if you'll notice on the right here, this one is diagrams and a snap. So this is just sharing a quick idea, sharing the specific steps that they can use to play. Again, you'll notice that that theme common, commonly thrown out here to play and interact with Seesaw as well. So let's keep talking. Well, how do we get all this stuff, right? So we have a master document where you can access all of these materials related to Seesaw learning levels. And I really, really, really encourage you to use this bit.ly. So whenever you're accessing this, make sure you start with this bit.ly first. That is number one, going to make sure you get to the most up-to-date resource. Second, it's also going to help us gauge you know how useful is this to you how many people are accessing it as well so please 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 uh, make sure you're using that so what i'm actually going to do right now is i'm going to go to that doc and show you what it looks like so when i'm in this doc this master doc i have a couple um things that i can go to first of all we're really excited for your feedback so we have a form at the very top we want to hear from you we want you to show you know show us your thinking uh what can we change what can we do better so we link that there we also have the seesaw learning level resource just kind of that one page that i was starting to describe there will be more coming and in fact i'm going to give you a itty bitty peek at what will be coming uh, similar to this where we have level one set up level two getting started it's going to show you very specific things that teachers are going to be working on and you're using this to guide your interactions with the teacher these would never be intended to hand off to a teacher and say here you go do it on your own as we mentioned before um, we are still building those so the, that aspect is not ready yet so like i said stay tuned um, you already know the, about the seesaw interactive training slides those you should be very familiar with if you're not they are also linked here but here is our seesaw training stations and our seesaw snapshot so if we want to view them we're going to go right here to look first at the seesaw training stations uh, you're going to get to this spreadsheet and we're taking you here because like I said, we are, we want to get this out to you as quickly as possible and get you started somewhere. Um, just note that we are going to continue to add to this. So right now you can actually download all of them. So I'm actually going to just go there and open this up. But you'll see we have six different stations. They are really focused on the basics. So we're doing photo we're doing photo and voice um, we're giving them time to play with photo and drawing let's do an exit ticket let's try photo drawing and voice 
Okay, so you can see we're building um, their confidence and also their knowledge of Seesaw and what it can do in very specific classroom ideas and implementation. So we explore draw and record. We explore video, okay? We also don't, you know, again, we're really starting with the core tools. Um, so that's really just important to note. You'll also note when you go into these resources, many of them are in PDF form um, so that we can make sure that the font doesn't get messed up for you and they're really ready for you to go. Uh, let's look at the Seesaw snapshot. So again, these are those really quick tips and printables that you can have ready for your teachers. Again, this is going into a spreadsheet where we're organizing them by level. We haven't yet um, linked all of the individual links to all of these yet, so stay tuned, but you can get them all right here if you follow this link. And again, our intention is to give the individual links so you can easily, if needed, send electronically, but the real intent of these is to post uh, in your school as well. So for a teacher that's creating their Seesaw account, we talk about the steps for creating their very first class, um, adding students. So we have 17 of these already prepared for you um, that you can use and support your teachers with. I want to point out too, as I scroll here, and I'm going really fast intentionally because we, you know, boy, there's so much to talk about. I have so much more to tell you, actually. Um, there are a couple here that are intended for families, and you'll notice that because it has the family um, app logo on it, and it also in the bottom right, it just notes share with families. Again, to point out, you're going to see on the bottom of all these resources the level they correspond with so that you make sure you're sharing with your teacher what's most appropriately appropriate for where they're at with their Seesaw learning. Woohoo! So much exciting stuff happening. I love it. I love it. I'm going to get out of this thing right here, but I need to keep cruising because I have so much more to tell you. Um, what I'm actually going to do right now is pause and give you the second uh, set of three digits to combine to create this code. So the next three digits you'll need for your certificate is uh, four, nine, two. So when you put those three and three together, you'll have your code to get your certificate if you're watching this via recording. Those of you that are live, you have no worries, you're going to get it sent to you automatically. So shifting gears a little bit here, we are going to talk about updates that are coming really soon to Seesaw. And we are sharing these with you in this session because we want you to be informed. We know this is a key time where you are doing trainings. We don't want you to have any surprises. And the real reason behind why are we making these updates now is we want to make some minor tweaks so that new teachers can get started with Seesaw quickly. So we're going to really go really fast here. Be, be ready, buckle up, uh, because I have a lot to show you in a short amount of time. If you are a Seesaw ambassador, you are actually going to get all the details of this sent to you in an email. But again, normally, like this is not something I would train your teachers on, the stuff that we're going to talk about next. This is to really just give you the context of what is um, happening here soon. So again, this is coming next Wednesday. We have changes coming to the add button. First of all, do you see it looks different? It actually has the word add on it. So it's very clear to a teacher that button does something. Uh, we have some language changes coming to the options there too. Uh, it will say post to student journal or post student work. Boy, I got to practice that. Um, assign activity and send announcement. So that's the first change that's coming again next Wednesday. All right, next Wednesday, also sharing an activity with a teacher. It's in a new place. So you are now going to be able to see this via the three dots after you save an activity. So before, when you tap that share button on an activity, it would give you an option to share with your class or it would have that tab share to other teachers. Now we are separating that. So we really wanna make it clear that if teachers are assigning an activity, that flow is very clearly going to just their students. So again, this isn't coming till next Wednesday. I would say by end of day, you might see that when you update your app, your iOS app in particular. All right, 
next Wednesday. The blog is still here, but guess what? The tab is going to be hidden. So it is going to be hidden because we don't want it taking up space until your teachers are ready to enable that blog. So they can still find it in their class settings. It will still be there. Next, likes are going to be hidden by default. We really believe comments provide more meaningful way to share feedback in Seesaw. So when a teacher creates a new class, that like button is actually going to be turned off for students and families by default. So again, this is next Wednesday. All right, another one, a teeny, teeny, tiny group of teachers, a very tiny group of teachers this Thursday will get to experience um, something that we're trying as a way to make it easier to get more families connected. So as you can see here, it is showing on the screen right now how you can invite families to get connected via email. And again, this is a teeny, 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 tiny group of teachers that might see this uh, coming on Thursday. We are just telling you now because we don't want you to be surprised if, you know, for example, there's one teacher out of your whole group of teachers that has this different um, look. So you can see kind of the flow here, um, but just again, just as a heads up, you still have the same options for printing the invite or sharing a link as well. Those still will exist. All right. And live now, yay! Lock is here. That means you are able to keep those background images in place, right? So when we introduce the ability for you to add multiple photos to the canvas and move them around, we quickly figured out with feedback from our community that, hey, it's kind of annoying that the background image moves. So we now have lock um, as something that will automatically happen if they are adding a photo first um, from photo on the create tool screen and they can also lock and unlock images so they are movable so that's just kind of a handy new feature and also if you're not you're not aware of this yet we have a brand new Chrome extension that is live this is used in addition to Seesaw in any Chrome browser to allow your students to quickly capture that image, either a screenshot or a selected area, and it will bring it directly into Seesaw. If you have not played with this, get there now. It is so slick, um, really opens up so many opportunities for students to reflect on no matter where they're at and where they're learning. So definitely check that out. Whew, okay. We're getting there. The next thing I want to tell you about is something new that we are trying uh, with webinars. So we have gotten a lot of feedback and heard from a lot of teachers that their district or school is allowing them to show professional development hours. So maybe they have 12 hours they need to get throughout the school year, or maybe they have continuing education credits that they need to show or get. What we have done is we are playing around with, um, we're testing this out, and we're gonna see how it goes over the next month here, where we have a certificate for each specific webinar that teachers attend. And what that means is that if you come to a live webinar, you're going to get the certificate emailed to you automatically in the follow-up email, okay? But we also know that teachers love to view the recording like many of you are probably doing right now if you're not here live. We also wanted to open the opportunity for those teachers to still get, you know, that piece of paper showing that they actually did that extra work out of their school day. Um, so we're offering the ability for them to fill out a form and while listening to the session as you experienced today, I'm just going to say a six character code. They will have to basically watch the entire session in order to get that code. As you experienced today, I didn't show anything on the screen. I'm not always going to say it at the same time. But once they have that code, they can fill out the form and they will be able to then get access to that certificate. So you as a tech integrationist or administrator can feel really confident that your teachers are 
so excited about continuing to develop um, professionally and they also have something to prove to you all the hard work that they are doing. So we really encourage you to share with your teachers that this is an option and an opportunity and also encourage you to really think at the school and or district level, how could this support you know, what you're already doing and how can you um, make sure that teachers are kind of um, able to use these certificates to maybe show some of the professional learning hours that they are accumulating. So just one thing to note, this does begin or did begin on August 13th, 2019. We're not able to give certificates for views before that day. Um, okay. Whew. So if you're not familiar with PD and PJs, this is the site where you're going to find all of the information related to PD and PJs. So make sure you share that with your teachers as well. And we want to, again, focus on making sure you have connections with other tech integrationists. And boy, oh boy, is there some good discussion happening in our Facebook group. So if you haven't joined there yet, make sure you get in there and share it with other colleagues that would benefit as well. So whoo, we did it. We just have a few more minutes to spare, but um, I am going to take time now to answer questions. I wanna make sure that we'll see how many questions we can actually get through today, but we really, really hope you explore our new resources and are eager to share your feedback as well.